Aquaman, directed by James Wan and written by David Leslie Johnson and Will Beale, is a movie that harkens back to the so-called dark ages of comic book movies, where there is a script full of cheesy lines and there is very little cohesion to the story. But despite its lack of writing, there are really great designs, action, and special effects. If you're one of those people who are looking for Aquaman to save the DCEU, sorry to say this, but Aquaman isn't the movie you're looking for. That was the worst pet talk ever. Drop in. Aquaman is full of detailed visuals and should be lauded for its underwater scenes alone. You can tell that Atlantis is a place that has a deep history, as it has a detailed and storied material culture to back it up with its ruins, artifacts, and its subjects' armaments. Some of my favorite comic book movie costumes come from Aquaman, as the costume designer took a lot of pseudo-historical elements and designs that are associated with Atlantis, like using cues from ancient Greek culture and the arms and armor, buildings, and much more, as the first references to Atlantis came from the works of the great Greek philosopher Plato. What makes these details even better is the way they and the characters react to the underwater world. Each movement they make where the characters are in the water looks as if they were actually in the water. What I mean is, they and their bodies interact with the flow and way in which the water flows in relation to their bodies, which makes them seem as if they were true Atlanteans that adapted to their environment over time. The best performances in Aquaman have to go to Patrick Wilson as King Orm slash Ocean Master and Willem Dafoe as Volko. Wilson shines as the confident and passionate king that wants to desperately bring back his kingdom and his people to their former glory. Defoe's Volko is a kind, loyal, and faithful teacher that although on the outside he is serving one king, on the inside he is sowing the seeds of the true king. Both men embody their characters and treat them as if they truly were kings or advisors. Speaking of characters, it's time to get into the negatives. Jason Momoa as Aquaman wasn't really that much different than his public persona. He really is himself in the movie. Yes, he is an entertaining guy and makes the movie fun to a certain extent, but it's him, not Arthur Curry or Aquaman. Part of acting is to distance yourself from who you are in order to portray someone else. And if your character has superpowers, that can't be the only thing that should be distancing your own personality away from the character you're supposed to be playing. There are some points where he shines, but I couldn't see past the persona. In addition to this, the character never accomplishes what the movie set him out to do in the first place, which is probably down to the worst part of the movie. It's writing. Aquaman is convoluted at best, due to its lazy writing with a story and confusing tone. It was almost as if a child who just read an Aquaman comic book for the first time and knew inklings of conspiracy theories about Atlantis and thought dialogue from a children's book would be good in an epic popcorn movie. One of the interactions that's still stuck in my mind is this scene between Arthur and Mira. Atlantis has always had a king. Now I need something more. But what could be greater than a king? A hero. This is the epitome of cheese. And there are too many scenes like this in Aquaman. How could you take these characters seriously as they take themselves seriously when there's something like this in almost every scene? Another example can be found anywhere Black Manta has a line. Every single one of his lines were a hollow shell of what he should have been expressing, which made the scenes he was in without the helmet on very soap opera-esque. His introduction is the perfect example. In what should have been an emotionally charged scene, it was just laughable how he reacted to the situation. The tone was all over the place from one scene to the next. One scene, they were in a fantasy film. The next, an Indiana Jones adventure movie. And the next, after that, a bad romantic comedy. If they stuck with an adventure story that combined the vast lore of Atlantis and the story of how it unravels to be true, I think it would have been a better movie. Overall, Aquaman is a grilled cheese sandwich. It's a movie that looks delicious on the outside, but on the inside, it's gushing with cheese. And not very good cheese either. It's one of those movies where kids who have seen the movie today will years from now on, after they have their nostalgia lenses removed, will gather on the couch, put this movie on, and laugh on how unintentionally funny Aquaman really is.
On the bright side, however, at least they can appreciate the detailed work in the ocean setting, the cool designs of the costumes, and the action.